Imagine you come home from school. Your mom and dad tell you that you're moving from Montana all the way to California. You are joyful at the news, not just because you're starting a new life as a 16-year-old girl in Los Angeles, California, but also you'll be reuniting with your best friend, Brooklyn Hayes, who also moved there a couple years ago. It's your first day at your new school. You're walking the hall, all swagger and all, and you see two girls posted up at the locker. You decide to become their friend, and they tell you what groups to interact with and who to stay clear of at this new school. They warn you about the Barbie dolls, a group of three racist white women who walk the halls. But what they specifically warn you about is their leader. And as soon as they're about to tell you who their leader is, the Barbie dolls turn the corner and walk the hall. You turn your head and see at the apex of the triangle is the leader. And wouldn't you know, it's your best friend from childhood, Brooklyn Hayes. And at that moment, your entire body and blood and, and piss and calm has drained from your body. You are absolutely shocked. You have learned that your best friend from when you were like eight years old is now the most feared woman in this random high school in LA. This scenario is the reality for Savannah Reed. And in this show, she learns what the power of time can do to a person. LP is popular. What is it? Let me break something down for people who don't even know what Little's Pet Drops are. There are these things. Okay? They're tiny little toys that were made by Hasbro, and they were so cute and so fun, and I loved collecting them. For girls who weren't doll girls, they were Little's Pet Shop girls. I was an LPS girly. And these toys often were main characters of online shows made on YouTube by random channels. LPS Popular is a show made by Sophie GTV. It's basically if Euphoria went to Disney Channel to produce Euphoria instead of HBO Max. Sophie released the first episode on July 15th, 2010. And at that time in early 2010, 2008 and so forth, making shows with little pet shops, it was not common. Let's just say that Sophie GTV wasn't just the person who made the most popular LPS series on LPS Tube, but also was the pioneer as to what LPS shows are on YouTube. For those who have not watched LPS Popular and are confused, let me give a quick rundown. LPS Popular is a pseudo-realistic teen drama series focusing on two characters, Savannah Reed and Brooklyn Hayes. The series in the total over the past 10 years has about 29 episodes which are categorized into two seasons. And what starts out to be a competition to climb the popularity ladder turns into a story on mental health, abuse, body dysmorphia, and the power of social class. To give you a little bit of an idea of how popular this show was and how popular Sophie GTV was at the time, each episode has at least 2 million views. Which for a continuous series that you have to watch from the first episode to the last episode to understand what's going on, and a continuous series that has no actual people in it, all ran by one person and a bunch of plastic toys, that's pretty impressive. Throughout the series, we follow the protagonist Savannah Reed who navigates her sophomore year at Orange County Day High School. She often runs into trouble with the most popular girl in school, Brooklyn Hayes, aka her ex-best friend from childhood. Though Savannah approaches Brooklyn in a friendly manner, Brooklyn often meets her with harassment, telling her to stop getting in her way, and she is the one to run the school, and has the ability to make Savannah's life miserable. LPS Popular continues to show the growing tension between the two as they verbally and physically fight to get under each other's skin. Early on in the series, things tend to get a bit dark, as Savannah undergoes the struggles of body dysmorphia and develops an eating disorder. This is due to the harassment and comments Brooklyn has made on her body, telling her that she has sausage legs and often looks like a hippopotamus. This results in Savannah not eating meals, throwing out her food, not eating in front of other people, and becoming faint. She pushes her bodies to extremes and often has moments where her consciousness tells her she needs to become as thin as Brooke. All at the same time, Brooklyn herself also battles with eating. She often worries about calories, working out, and only keeping under a certain weight. Brooke's projection onto Savannah has led them down both a physically and mentally bad path. 
which is a large contribution to their heat against one another. Besides internal struggles, their love lives also clash one another. In season one, after Savannah gets a whole new makeover, she catches the eyes of Sage Bond, aka Brooklyn's long-term boyfriend of three years. The two become close and romantic tension sparks as time goes on. Brooklyn immediately puts a stop to this by lying to Sage and telling him that Savannah body shamed her the other day, calling her fat to top it all off and to make sure Sage never wanted to get near Savannah again, Brooke begins to spread a rumor that Savannah has a skin disease that oozes pus and is highly contagious. Another incident occurs where Savannah starts dating a new boy by the name of Tom Dawson, but Brooke is aggravated by this because Tom is her ex-boyfriend. The issue is that Brooklyn can't directly confront anyone about it because Brooke cheated with Tom while she was dating Sage. So the only way Brooke knows how to put a stop to their relationship is to deal with it outside of school grounds. This leads to LPS popular episode 14, The Party of the Century, aka the most viewed episode of the entire show, with almost 7 million views. This episode features Brooklyn throwing a costume party at her house, with the whole school showing up. Drama ensues throughout the night, people are making out, claws start swinging. This episode is truly the most interesting one of all, because it gathers every single main character and puts them in a situation where each one of them has to explain themselves and their sides of the story. Episode 14 sets up the next 15 episodes, with strain and tension growing between Savannah and Brooklyn. Season 2 lives up to the expectations Sophie GTV set up in the season finale, and things are already on a roll. Savannah and Sage suddenly start dating out of nowhere, but Savannah feels uncomfortable as an exchange student from Paris moved in with Sage's family and starts flirting with him and causes an unease in Sage and Savannah's relationship. On the other side, Brooklyn's pet cricket runs away from home after being neglected by Brooke, and Savannah finds him in the bushes, cold and hungry. This results in Savannah taking him in and one day bringing him to school unknowing the cricket was originally Brooke's pet. Well, when Brooke finds out, the two start to fight over the ownership of the cricket, which then leads to physical swings and ends in Brooklyn getting knocked out by Savannah. After Brooke is transported to the hospital, Savannah is suspended from school. Brooklyn then contacts Savannah, telling her she has 24 hours to break up with Sage or she'll press assault charges and drain her family of every cent to their name. Because of the little to no witnesses in the hall when the fight broke out, Brooklyn has a huge advantage, not just by the lack of witnesses, but also because Brooklyn is filthy rich, and Savannah is not exactly on the same plane as her. This means if this case went to court, Brooklyn would obviously win the favor because she has access to high-end lawyers, and Savannah hasn't even sought out any legal counseling yet. The point is, is that Savannah and Brooklyn got some shit going on between them, right? In the beginning, Sophie didn't have the intention on making these videos for eventual popularity, but because she wanted to essentially entertain her younger brother. But these videos eventually led to a very dedicated audience, which led to her making higher production like episodes, investing more in like props, storylines, characters, and essentially gaining a community full of people. At the time, making storyline based videos using Little's Pet Shops were not common. They weren't unheard of, but the production and the value and the time and dedication that Sophie put into hers was not anyone has ever seen before. This inspired all kinds of channels to start making their own LPS content, which led to some of my favorite shows watching growing up. This whole thing led to a community starting full of people who not just started making their own shows, but also made their own films, short films, comedy skits, LPS tube was born, and that is with the thanks of the torchlighter that is Sophie GTV. You could tell right away, even from the very first episode, though the quality of the camera is not the best, the props, the, the voice acting, the camera angles, the music, the editing, she had an affinity for filmmaking and storytelling. And I think the reason that LPS Popular did so well wasn't just because of those qualities that came naturally to her, but because LPS Popular was not the first show that she made. It was not the first series that she made using Little's Pet Shops. So before LPS Popular came out in 2010, Sophie had made three other prior drama-based series. LPS Summer Camp, LPS CSI, and LPS The Queen. 
These three shows all different in plot and age range between protagonist in LPS Summer Camp, the protagonists are literally children, and LPS CSI, they're full grown adults. But something that's interesting about Sophie GTV's work is though they all go in different plot directions, they all had one thing in common. The occurrence of death. Every drama series that she made always had death, always had a character die, always had someone passing away. This was kind of like something that would drive the plot, would stop the plot, would end the entire show. Someone was always dying. LPS Summer Camp is about two girls from different social classes going to the same summer camp. The rich one's very snobby, has a maid, um, has a big bag of things to pack, needs everything with her. The lower class one does not have a lot to pack with her. She's poor, but her mom is putting a lot of money into her having this really great experience. So when the two meet at summer camp, they don't exactly get along because the rich one's a fucking snob. But eventually they overcome their differences and are practically best friends by the end of the first night. Unfortunately though, as the night falls and they're sleeping in their camp together, some big monster like eats them alive, you know. Uh, a time skip to 10 years later, the summer camp has been turned into a reformation camp for problematic and rebellious teens. The series then follows a group of teenagers who go through the same trials and tribulations as the two smaller kittens did 10 years ago. LPS the Queen was only two episodes long, but the series was clearly important to Sophie because this is actually a remake of a show that she made back in 2008. The story tells of Princess Gwyneth. She's a naturally evil person and only wants to hurt and see the bad things that happen to people. She's very jealous of her older sister who is queen after both of their parents died. So when Gwyneth turns 18, she makes a promise to herself to kill her older sister, her older sister's husband, and that would then put Princess Gwyneth into the place of being. Queen Gwyneth. But being the queen does not stop her evil nature. If anything, it enhances it. Now that she has all this power, throughout her reign, she executes all these servants who don't do exactly what she wants. When she's unsatisfied with the meal, she will decapitate people and drown people and serve them to some meat eating animals. And basically, the servants, the group of servants, are fed up with this behavior. They're going, oh my god, this this stupid queen keeps killing our friends. So they decide to stage a, a plan where they take the queen out for a day to wave to the peasants of the kingdom and accidentally throw her into a burning lava lake. So then the queen dies, right? Uh, LPS CSI, it, it's CSI. You know, within the first two minutes of the first episode, we witness a hit and run. Wrapping it up, Death is a very key plot point and a key character in all of Sophie GTV's drama series. So this leads to the question of the entire video, the purpose as to why I'm making this whole video. If it's so apparent in all of her drama shows, then what is the death in LPS Popular? Who, what, where, when, and how does death and that occurrence impact the plot of LPS Popular. Because it's in all of her stuff. It's in every single drama show that she has made. So what death is in LPS Popular? Now it's not exactly easy to say because in the show, no one has died. No one's died. No one's gone to the hospital and died. People have gone to the hospital. There have been stitches here and there through cat fights, but no one's flatlined. Well, in the entire 10 years, that LPS Popular has been running. There has been one death. I realize this, there has been one death. But the thing is, is that it, it is the death of a character that happened off screen and of a character that we've never seen before in the series. Not only that, but we have never even, there's no pictures of them and it only mentioned of their death. And that is Brooklyn's father. But what does Brooklyn's father's death have anything to do with the dying relationship between Savannah and Brooke? Well, here's the thing. There was a complete personality change in Brooklyn from when she was younger living in Montana to LA. And I know that LA changes people, but to that extent with, with nothing causing it, at least in this universe, it's not accurate. Now on the Wikipedia, it states that it is assumed that Brooklyn's dad died before LPS Popular took place, before the events of LPS Popular. So when Brooklyn was maybe like literally born 
were like at least five years old and then like a few years later lps popular started but i don't think that's accurate i don't think that's true and these are my reasons number one in the first episode okay the first episode when brooklyn is telling savannah that she's moving to california she states that they are sending me to this orange county day school in california i'm probably not going to fit in they're sending me to some uptight school called the orange county day school they implying both of her parents are still in the picture and the three of them are still together and they packed up and they went from montana to la all right so they're all still alive at this time number two whenever brooklyn is upset um her mother always comes with the quote i know how hard it's been for you since your father just listen now when someone dies in a family it takes years to recover someone could die when you're like 19 and you are sobbing at the idea of them not being on this earth anymore at 79 death is not something that you get over but it's something you cope with but i think in these events to say that i know it's been hard since your father has passed i think that might have to be something that happened recently in the past five to three years number three the most concrete piece of evidence is in a later episode of season two savannah and brooklyn are having a conversation and savannah mentions like hey well you know your dad loves you like what about your dad he cares about you this is when brooklyn then tells her that her father is dead i'm sure your dad means something to you and I'm sure you'll meet a billion other guys who will trip over themselves trying to mean something to you, Brooke. My father's dead. Oh, Doc, I, I had no idea. And the reaction from Savannah and the information that Savannah had about her father implies that Savannah thought that he was alive, has known her father, has probably interacted with her father before Brooklyn moved, and the reaction tells us that she's now just learning about his death. So because of this, I am assuming, and I can sure assume that everyone else who has thought about this a little bit, we've all assumed that the death happened in between the past years that Brooklyn has been in Montana and then went to LA. Something happened then after the move. This could also explain Brooklyn's personality change, not just coping with death, but the fact that between her mother and father, her father was the more nice one. He was the more kind one. He was the more considerate person. And her mother was more cruel, a little bit more hard to negotiate and talk to. And we know this because Savannah's own mother actually says this. Unfortunately, Brooke's mother is not being reasonable. I never really got along with her. It was her husband who was the nice one. So it is assumed that her father was the more positive role model in her life and the one that was responsible for her friendly nature. So that means that if he passed after the events of them moving to LA and he passed sometime when they were moving in California, that means that positive role model and that positive light is no longer in Brooklyn's life. And all that she has around her now is her mother who has a cruel nature, who has no positives, who's also just extremely narcissistic and doesn't care about her daughter and doesn't spend quality time with her. And so having that energy around you all the time suddenly will change you. It will change your personality. It will change how you think and see life. And the interactions between Brooklyn and her own mother are strained. They have a strained relationship. Her mother's not at home. She's always working. Whenever Brooklyn wants to talk to her own mother about something, she gets interrupted by a business call and gives Brooklyn cash as kind of a replacement for connection and relationship. So her mother is not an affectionate person, and Brooklyn used to be an affectionate person. And then when that affectionate person in Brooklyn's own life passes away, she turned more into her mother. This also reflects Brooklyn's not just her own personality, but also how she started treating other people. And that's why she's so rude. That's why she was so rude to Savannah. And that's why she has no good connections with anyone else. She's so isolated. She's mean to everyone, rude to everyone, thinks that money makes the world go round and in the in this show it does and in real life it does but actual personal connection does not matter to brooklyn anymore and because of brooklyn's father's death because of that death it caused a death of a friendship between brooklyn and savannah two people who loved each other so much as friends had a 
real genuine connection. The death of her own personal life took into kind of a domino effect and also caused the death of a great friendship between a friend. And I think in this show, and I think unintentionally, Sophie GTV made a very dramatic choice to separate not just the death of a person, but also the after effects of how it can affect your relationships with other people. The impact of how home life and the influence parents have on their child can affect how they develop relationships in the future and possibly taint the ones they have now. I really do think that if Brooklyn's father was still alive, that she would not be this mean, harsh person. Her father would give a reality check. Her father would be kind, compassionate, and, and raise Brooklyn to treat others with kindness. But because he's not there anymore and no one's there to teach her that, her mother is not even around. And when she is around, she does not give a shit. She does not care about Brooklyn's mental well-being or how much she's eating, if she's eating at all. She does not give a shit. And I think the relationship that Brooklyn and Savannah had at a young age, that kind of childhood friendship, is one of the most pure forms of love that exist in the world. It is the act to choose someone who you do not need to, not by blood, not by association, but the choice to choose someone that you have no connection with and to love them and to cherish them as a friend or even like romantic love, to choose someone that was never in your life from the beginning, but to hold them like at a high standard and even higher sometimes as certain family members, for that to kind of fizzle out can be traumatic. And I do think that the death of the friendship between Savannah and Brooklyn is hard to watch sometimes because the show never concluded. There was never a finale. There was never like a concluding episode. Sophie GTV suddenly just stopped making episodes. She's older now. She has her own life, probably like a whole job and all those things. She's got other priorities, right? I think it is pretty cool that there wasn't a moment where Savannah and Brooklyn realized that, hey, we're, we're just regular people. We used to be best friends and what happened? Because there's so many reasons as to why people act the way that they do when they're older. And it sucks that in this situation, it's not Brooklyn's fault. In conclusion, I know that the death in LPS Popular is technically her father, but I think the true death in LPS Popular is the friendship between Savannah and Brooklyn. And that, that is my theory. Thank you for watching. This was, um, this was fun. I, there's a lot of people who talk about LPS Popular online. I just kind of, I wanted to put my two cents in, but it's like kind of one of those things that kind of racks around your, it's like throwing up, you know, you just want to like press your uvula and just get it out. So it's not, you know, manifesting inside of you and stirring and brewing around. Thank you very much, especially to Sophie GTV. You have made me the person that I am today. All right. <coughs> it's over. The video's done. Finally, some peace. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank please. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, yeah, come on.